headphones. That phasing thing is kind of interesting. All of our headphones, all of them, have phase reversal on them now. What is phase reversal in a headphone? Well, first of all, Heil Sound is the only headphone on the planet that's doing this. Why did I do it? Because of my love of phasing. However, when you run these two speakers out of phase, you absolutely, you acoustically, can move that signal. You go in and tune up a pileup on CW, and you hit the phasing switch, one of them will jump out in front of you. The rest will go behind. You have a bunch in the noise. Flip the phasing switch. You can move signals around in your head. It is an amazing phenomenon. And even in our, this is our, just a headset. And we built this for the recording industry and the audio engineers that run sound in uh, uh, stages and stuff. Uh, actually, Bob Workman, who is Charlie Daniels' sound man, he was pushing me hard. He said, you need to build a decent headphone just for us. And so that's what we've done. But of course, <laughs> the amateur radio is just really great for CD. Oh, just listening. It's wonderful. But the phase reversal in all of our microphones are terrific. One of the other things that we came up with and it's wonderful, we now can plug this into the bottom of your microphone and plug like this into the microphone input of your transmitter and you don't need any wire. And they're absolutely transparent. You can't tell if it's wired or with our new HPA. A lot of guys have asked us to do that. And so these are things that we've done for you. And that's what's so important, because I listen to everybody. Last but not least, i, I got to bring my, my good friend Joe Walsh around to this one. Uh, Joe uh, asked me some time ago, he, he's been very predominant. In, in a lot of our products because he'll ask me to build something and I build it just for him and end up the whole world wants it after he shares it with the world. I didn't mean that to happen, but I guess it's nice that it did. He said, you need, you need to build me a microphone that looks like the front end of a 48 Pontiac. If you know Joe's, I mean, that's pretty much Joe Walsh. And so I said, okay, I will. So I did. And I, I, I build a microphone that looks like the front end of a 48 pound. Guess what? Most of these sound awful. Uh, there's a lot of companies building microphones that are they look cool, but they sound terrible. Hey, ZZ Top, all kinds of people are using this. Uh, the Hunter Games, if you saw the movie. There's tons of people using this because it's got RPR20 in it. But I thought, you know what? This is for Joe Walsh. So here's what I did. I made it light up. Very <laughs> <laughs> good. Oh God. I didn't have another cable, so I could uh, do that too. But uh, there you go. You just you just make things happen. And as a ham radio operator, I love to make things happen. And so we're, we're very, very honored and we're blessed to, to bring you all of this kind of stuff. What we're going to do the second hour here at 11 is going to get into receiving. So you might want to come back and, and catch some of this because I'm a guy that I just go freak when you see all of this stuff happening today and it's not right. It's just not right. The manufacturers... I guess they never listen to their own radio, or they listen to it in a little white room, a little white coated guy. But uh, we're going to get into receiving and how we can do some very cool things with antennas and get 15, 20 dB real easy. So we'll do some uh, different things. Before I go, though, let's do some questions. Anybody have any questions? Somebody's got to have a question. Yes. Are you on Bluetooth on the microphone? Yes. Bluetooth is readily available for the headset. Why haven't you combined the headset, the microphone, the perfect dock? Well, we're working on that project. Here we are. And uh, this is being used by a lot of people for video cameras and stuff also. So there's a lot of use for just the microphone. But uh, we're, we're looking into the thing of headset. First thing is, I hate Bluetooth. I hate the name. I know it's for some.
some Danish guy, I'm sorry. But it doesn't sound good. Every Bluetooth I've ever heard, we fixed it. You know how? You know how? They're overdriving the preamp. It's very simple. You work and work and work, and you just go in here and reduce the preamp so it doesn't overdrive. Look at these engineers. I don't care. Great question. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Yes. Yeah, you, you were talking about the one in the microphone that sounds like a kind of hell. Yes. If a person like a public is saying a lot of money for a radio, why does this particular company throw in a cheap mic for a good radio? Because they don't care. They don't listen. It's all about marketing. And it's all about money. Trust me, I told you I work for these companies. They could care less. That is why Dr. Inouye and Dr. Hasegawa came to me some years ago for my help to make their radio set because they don't understand audio. They're RF engineers. And that's what he said. How do we that? Oh, it's real simple. I have a whole bunch of money. <laughs> You can't. They're not going to listen to you. Because they know now that we're taking care of the audience. They just figure, they're letting them take care of it. I'm serious. You know, I'm serious. So you know, don't be hard-handed about it. There's too many simple and inexpensive answers. Here's one of them. My wife, Sarah, owns and runs this company. I'm just an inventor. She used to invent stuff. And a few years ago, when things got a little crazy with all the financial stuff, she said, you need to build a microphone that's a little less expensive. Notice I didn't say cheap, because it's not. And there's a long story about this, but this was designed for an interview microphone for broadcast. This was going to be about 250 bucks. It's got an open frame, very unique element that I designed for them. But after we got all the tooling, they wanted it longer. So all this tooling was lost. And we put it aside. When she came up with this idea, I said, hey, I still have that over here. HM12, it's 70, 80 bucks. Is that too much? No, it's less than most of these stupid hand mics that you buy. And listen to it. I mean, I got guys on using this on broadcast television. And for 70 or 80 bucks, you can put it in your transmitter. You better put the talk switch on it. This is some great stuff. So, thank you. dollars a little stupid, trust me. You know, somebody's ripping it. Yes, sir? How would you rate the early call uh, uh, made by Turner? They were made by Turner. Yeah, they were fine for those days. 2.1 KC wide, so they're very narrow banded. They don't sound good on other transmitters because of the bandwidth's wider to do. And of course, the, the cartridges, after a while, they get very brittle. So you don't want to you don't want to do that. That's that's not the way to go. Nice. This works great into it. Yes. Yeah. 